Okay, thank you, Dr. Konidari, for your presentation. I can see that there are some questions, so let me read them. You stress the importance of the reliability of the qualitative database of behavioral information. However, qualitative data collection has often a certain subjectivity. Is there a specific survey process or questionnaire customized for use with the Iron DST? Okay, let me answer this question, although it will be shortly presented in the following presentations. Uh, we conducted a questionnaire survey. First of all, um, we ran a um, uh, study research, um, and then we realized that there are too many barriers concerning the technologies and the policies, but they were not enough for behavioral uh, characteristics, so then we ran a um, a questionnaire. Each of the partners had to um, to, to give the questionnaire to ten main players of his national market and for answering. And uh, this had also open answers and um, to choose from multiple choices. Again, this is a bit subjective. Uh, there is a subjectivity because. Uh, this is a, it, is, it, it relies on the experience of uh, the person who is answering. But again, uh, when we are talking with the main players of the national market, we believe that these are the more reliable answers that we can get. But then there is not a fixed questionnaire. This was used for our research, for our project. So whoever wants to proceed with his own research can use his own questionnaire. Is it possible to introduce new impact factors, barriers, etc., that have not previously been considered? Uh, Dr. Konivari, would you like to answer? Yes, we have um, developed the, uh, the software in such a way so that we can incorporate new barriers. So the initial set of the 27 can be increased if there are barriers that were not initially considered. And after that, we can use it and uh, prepare uh, and calculate the new impact factors. Thank you. Next, quest next question. Um, I assume that the real relative weight of policy aspects, cultural, depends on the governmental policy. Are there specific usual weights? Um, I'm not sure about uh, the term usual weights. But uh, if you look into the um, conditions that we have set, yes, you will see the governmental policy because we took into consideration the policy instruments that are about that time were used in order to overcome the barriers which were under that category as well. Next question. Can you provide an example of real scenarios and the conclusions from the use of the DST? Yes, this is exactly the presentation that follows, so give us a minute. And then are there specific underlying differences between buildings and transport that the DST foresees? Dr. Gondari. Okay, um, we had the same number of barriers for buildings and transport. Some were common, they had the same meaning, but there were also differences. And when we evaluated them, we saw that they didn't have the same importance uh, in one or the other sector. I think that that will be in one of the last presentations where you can see perhaps such differences, or if you look into the reports of here, you can see what we mean with this difference between the weight, co the impact factors of some barriers between buildings and transport. Thank you. Could the DST be used for other sectors, for example, the industrial infrastructure? Yes, uh, we have used the buildings and the um, uh, transport sector because that was uh, uh, the foreseen sectors for the Iron project. But yes, we can use them for other sectors as well. Uh, where are the impact factors taken from? May I, may I intervene? Uh, Professor Mavrakis, please. Yes, just for this. Well, it is important to understand that uh, we try to understand how behavioral attitudes influence decision-making. 
So depending on the case, we can modify properly uh, the tool and uh, the methodology. So we can, uh, we can yes, we can, uh, we can yeah, use uh, this uh, tool not only for NLP, but also we can use uh, the tool for other uh, activities of human life uh, when uh, it is necessary to transform qualitative data to quantitative data in uh, um, scenarios making. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, where are the impact factors taken from Dr. Konivari? Yes. Um, uh, the impact factors uh, are calculated in the background of the software. If someone wants to see how they are calculated, uh, he or she has to go through the manual where we have in detail how these are calculated. Basically, they are, um, they are calculated using the analytical hierarchy process, so all the details are there. And uh, again, are there any specific regions, countries using the tools, capacities and potential? Well, uh, for the time being, we have used it for the seven countries of the HERON project, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Estonia, Greece, Germany, Serbia, Italy, and UK. Uh, of course, it can be used for other countries as well. Um, about capacities and potential, um, if you are referring to the tool, um, there are several ideas and we will try to materialize them in the next month. So already the next question is answered. The, there is a study about the Italian country that it was conducted by the University of Bocconi. It is available on the site and you can find all the information uploaded there. The next question, could you elaborate more on how you associate a certain barrier with a certain target? That's in the background of the software and uh, the explanation is given in uh, the manual and we have that also in a paper that is published in uh, uh, the journal of the Prometheus Network. So um, uh, if you go through that, you'll see how we connect it. Okay, to save time, I guess, uh, yes. here. Uh, can you use it in all EU countries? Of course, we can use it in all EU countries and above. It's not uh, restricted for the European Union. In which way is the software... No, no, just, a, just a moment. I, I, would like to, I would like to clarify that our efforts and our ambition is uh, to promote uh, this uh, tool uh, in countries out of European Union, we uh, we are, we try to go, we are in contact with uh, uh, UNEP and the uh, International Energy Agency, and uh, in 15 days from now we have a, we organize an event uh, to promote uh, the use of this. Uh, uh, here on our project among the 12 countries of the Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization. So it, it is something that it is not uh, that it is a, a, it is an outcome. It is a tool that uh, and a methodology that does not target only EU countries, but uh, with the support uh, of the European Union, we try to disseminate our activities worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Dr. Konizari, in which way is the software validated? Um, we had uh, two, let's say, groups of uh, EU experts that uh, went through the software and the methodology. The one was the independent uh, group of experts from the European Commission that uh, looked through everything and they found the software that it's uh, very unique, uh, innovative and that it fills in the new research area. We also had the quality control unit in the project that went through all the documents and they were also very pleased about the outcome, or the software and the methodology and everything. Um, should I answer the next one? Yes, yes. Okay, could the DSD be used directly in the projects? Yes, and it depends on um, uh, the type of the project and uh, if it's uh, for uh, 
developing scenarios or for understanding barriers. So uh, if you contact us and tell us that you have a certain idea, we'll be open in such discussions. Yes, but I would like also to add something. It has to be clear that uh, we have developed a methodology and a tool that uh, facilitated policy makers, but the policy maker is, n is not uh, a strictly defined uh, group of people associated with governments. Policy makers are also members in, uh, in, uh, in industry. Policy makers are uh, uh, persons that are in companies. So if you have, let's say an example, you have a, a company that promotes um, LEDs in the market, it is important for them to understand what will be the reaction of uh, the end users uh, when they will try to promote uh, their the, uh, products, it's not it's not sometimes not enough just to to provide a, a, a product in a low price uh, if uh, the buyer does not understand what is the use of the product. So yes, uh, the 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 tool and the proposed methodology can apply to uh, to uh, to companies and. Uh, to say some more important, it, uh, and again, it's not, uh, it does not apply only to energy efficiency uh, projects. It can also apply in making decisions for other issues that are related with the behavior of local societies against uh, something new. Uh, let me tell you, uh, let me give you the example of, uh, uh, of, uh, the, uh, of the barriers that uh, promoting an, uh, re renewable energy in local societies face sometimes. So when you go somewhere and you, you face a, a barrier, a refusal from the local societies to receive, let's say, a photovoltaics or a wind uh, in their uh, society, then you have to understand what, what is, the, what is uh, the real structure of uh, the problem and then how can you incorporate this problem in your decision making. So the answer is that yes, we have this developed a tool and a methodology that applies not only to energy efficiency policies but to, to a broader uh, spectrum of activities. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So, shall we close this first session of questions and answers and uh, proceed to the next presentation, which um, will be given by Ms. Eleni Danai Mavraki, and she will present us how to incorporate the results and in how to improve energy scenarios. Here we will see some examples of uh, real action of the Iran Decision Support Tool. So, Eleni Danai, the microphone is yours.